Korean college entrance exam, basically. And it's like pretty similar to like SAT in America, but the like biggest difference is the Sunung. You can only take it like once in a year. So like basically like on that day, like it's just super like very important and like as long as I remember, like when you take Sunung, it starts around like eight in the morning and then it ends around like 4.30. In the if you're a Korean student, okay, your entire educational career, starting when you're two years old, going to your <laughs> first Hagwon, your entire educational career is to take that exam right, right. there. Everything is that exam. There's yeah. like nothing else, mm -hmm. right? So if you're like sick or like not feeling well on that day, you have to like redo it in a year. When the sunning ends, there's a lot of articles that coming out. I'm talking about like like students like suiciding, because like a lot of like students they just end up like suiciding because they didn't do well on the sunung and they feel like kind of like pressure under it. Even mm -hmm. they may have had a panic attack and so yeah. they knew they didn't do well. And mm -hmm. So there are like four to five subjects. So like all the people they take mathematics, Korean, English. Like if you're like liberal arts students, you're, you, you, you can like pick two subjects on the liberal arts side. If you're like natural science student, you can like pick the other like two subjects on that side. And if you're over, if you're done, then it's, it's the end of the sunung. But if you take like foreign language test, you can like take it and then afterwards. You, uh, it's like six subjects in total. But if you take like extra foreign language test, it would be like seven. OK, so one thing about this is that the, the, the entire country is organized on this day right. around this test. So like the plane, <laughs> yeah, they do not run the plane on that day, like that time. Like so plane Because of the flight. noise. So, okay. <laughs> Meaning so they, they reroute air traffic. Even like companies, like they do not go to company on the day because of the traffic. So in the morning, in order to, to ensure that all the students make it to the exam on time, everybody in society, mm -hmm like companies and businesses and organizations right. start work later on that day to make sure everybody gets yeah. there. Schools are off and like all the teachers and like other students, they just go and cheer up. Like people cheering on. So these would be people from your school cheering on the seniors who are taking this. Or here's another, here's an, another one. Right. Like, what's that sign say? So let's go like Yonsei University because it's one of the top schools there. So I personally studied in the uh, International Baccalaureate uh, program and for what I know the highest scores are always from Korea. Um, do, is IB a big, a big thing in Korea or is it just like a small p part of the population that do it? Like, seems like um, IB schools in Korea they have only like small population of students. It's very competitive to get there. And it's a privilege that like most people, if they get into like those colleges, it's their like privilege. Their parents gonna be proud of you. Like if you go to like Seoul National University, your school's gonna have like flying cars for you. So you right. So there are three the, the there are three the three top universities in Korea. They're called the Sky the Sky University. So it's yeah. it's it's Seoul, Seoul National Seoul Korean National Uni Korean oh. University and Yonsei University. Mm -hmm. Those are top three. That's where everybody wants to go. So like back in high school, like there was a senior who got like hundreds on like each subject in like Sunung. And like in that period, like like the price of like our region, like apartments, they got really high for like certain amount of time because like people thought like if they moved to like specific region, like wait, their kids would be like. <laughs> yeah, wait, if they moved to your apartment complex, yeah. like it was in the water or so something? So it was a good thing. Yeah. So um, since y'all came to America and stuff, how was the transition, like with y'all heavy schedule learning in Korea, how was the transition for the schedule of American learning? How easy was that for y'all? Dude, Jun Ho just woke up like an hour ago, yeah, man. Sure. He didn't even. He's he's like he's like dealing with his sleep deprivation. For, <laughs>
Yeah, how is the trans? How about for you two guys? Like, how is the transition? So I came in U.S. when I was 15. I went to ninth grade to high school in very small city in North Carolina. Wait, um, so you did half of your high school in Korea? Yeah, I went to high half school for one semester in Korea, yeah, and then I quit school, and then I moved to U.S. Dude, how, just, okay, just talk about that transition, going from that high school semester in Korea to the high so, school semester in a small actually, town. Actually, I was not really doing good in Korea, you know, in education-wise, and then my brother, I have older brother who goes to uh, Georgia State, and then he went to U.S. Uh, a year ago, mm -hmm. like a year before me. So I just followed him. Yeah, got you. So, yeah, go ahead. Um, for me, it's my second year here in the United States. I finished my high school in my home country, South Korea, but I used to live in Canada when I was very young. So it's okay for me to like adopt here in the United States. Wait, and wh why'd you go to Canada? Oh, my dad, he works in a bank, and he, yeah, he got transferred there for, got like, a few years. So it was a great opportunity for me to, like, um, live abroad at a very got young you. age. So, Che, how was the transition for you? Because you say your parents didn't want you to, they didn't want you to go through that? Like, how, did you go to an IB school, by the way? In yeah, Cambodia? I went to an IB school in Cambodia. Can you yeah. say what that is to people who don't know? Oh, it's an it's an international baccalaureate program that goes on for two years, and you throughout that two the diploma program you have to take six subjects a subject in like each like so group each six group like a language literature a second language a si on individuals and societies science, math, and like art subject. And then you get to like choose from the pool of subjects you have within Got each you. like yeah. category. Got you, okay. Yeah, and at the end of that two years course, you would have to take a final exam. And until then you have to like complete a project for each subject to write like a whole report. And then along with like What's it called? Extended essay yeah. and so so this is good for folks who like you know you have this idea that if you're if you're really only focused on for this is for the Americans by the way because if you're not from the U.S. you have an under, a understanding of these kinds of things but if you're from the U.S. it's really good to just o open your mind up that there's a whole world of things happening out there that you know we have this idea that you know the, uh, uh, that. There's a lot going on out there that you are not part of. When I was in Korea, Junho and I went to this uh, Incheon International High School, and I gave a talk there. And you can see me somewhere in the middle. I think I'm in there. Oh, yeah, you can see me. There, there I am. Hang on. Right there. The dude. And so, <laughs> so, Jun, so teachers are really revered in Korea, right? Not like here, like those of you who are going into education, maybe you want to be teachers. It's like, you're not going into it because teachers have such high status and so on, but in Korea they do. Okay, so for in South Korea, if you're really educated, you're classified as like um, upper level. And yeah, um, students really, really liked you and like, um, you realize that um, a lot of students were actually, they were really good at English, and then they, they asked a lot of questions to you, so. Dude, I, these students asked questions of me that I couldn't answer. There were 15 and there were 15 year olds asking me questions to which I didn't have an answer. There was one question about, on, uh, about US foreign policy as it relates to China. These are 15 year olds, right, 16 year olds. And, and, I, and I almost had to do a call in to my friend who's the national security advisor to the White House on China. And I'm like, hang on a sec, y'all. I'm going to have to call her to get an answer to this question because I can't answer that question. I mean, this is what I do for a living. And I'm like, y'all are like, you've just like blown me away with this, right? And so that's my experience. But the idea is that teachers are, are revered, right? Like it, they really elevate it have really high staff. Thank you.